school board meeting for Tuesday, May 14th, 2002. The first item on our agenda is the Pledge of, of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Terrific to see uh, so many student faces here. You should come and visit us more often. Um, adjustments to the agenda, I believe that there are a couple. Yes, George, under our new business, we uh, need to vote on three contracts, administrative support and EdTech 1s, EdTech 2s and 3s, and the administrative contract. Um, so those will be added under item 13, new business, um, and that would be uh, F. We'll take all three of those contracts. Approval of April school board minutes. Um, were there any uh, revisions, corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, uh, they'll stand. Uh, and now we would invite our high school representatives to uh, give us an update of what's happening at the high school. Hi, uh, Dave is not with us this evening because uh, he has to uh, attend a conservation committee meeting uh, as part of his STP, so um, tonight Dave won't be joining us. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, there's a lot of stuff going on at the high school, so um, I'll just talk about it, I guess. Um, uh, probably the most uh, significant thing that's gone on uh, recently is the seniors have begun their senior transition projects. Uh, and uh, as far as I know, I haven't talked to many people since it just started uh, yesterday, but as far as I know, everything's going uh, pretty smooth. I just spoke to Mr. Jordan, uh, who's the uh, co-chair of that operation. Um, and he says there are very few problems and everything seems to be moving along uh, very well. Uh, the students I've talked to seem to enjoy uh, their STPs and find them very valuable, uh, as far as I know. Um, and uh, I've enjoyed mine, so if that's any measure of <laughs> uh, anybody else's. Um, and they will continue for the next three weeks. Um, and basically, uh, again, for anybody who's listening, it's a, who's not familiar with the project, it's, a, uh, it's an opportunity for students to experience uh, real world responsibilities and tasks and stuff like that. Or it can be a study program um, or like a, a pre-work um, arrangement where you can learn about a specific trade. Um, uh, or something along those lines. Um, and uh, so, yes, uh, Friday was the seniors' last day, uh, and I think it was a, uh, it was a bittersweet uh, departure from the high school, because obviously we're all very glad to leave uh, and enjoy summer, but uh, at the same time, uh, you, know, we, you know, we'll miss each other and we'll miss uh, the faculty and stuff like that and uh, grades behind us. Um, there are a number of senior pranks, uh, some mice released in the cafeteria, uh, somebody tried to release some crickets in the cafeteria, but was stopped. Uh, and somebody who's really smart managed to uh, remotely control the PA system. So um, that was a, a very interesting day. Uh, and there were a couple kind of stupid pranks, but anyway, those are the fu actual funny ones. Um, uh, uh, sports, uh, keep teams are doing very well. Um, and. Uh, obviously, should be very proud of that. Um, they always do very well. There's no exception. Um, and the, uh, I believe the, uh, uh, the finals are coming up. So um, obviously, we, we all wish them very good luck. Uh, and uh, finally, graduation is approaching, um, and that's another thing seniors are very uh, anxious about, uh, kind of dreading it on one hand, kind of uh, looking forward to it on the other. So there are a lot of preparations for that. Anyway, the graduation committee is uh, doing their. Uh, thing, uh, which Mr. Ely heads up, uh, and it looks like it should be a good uh, ceremony as long as the weather's all right. So uh, that's basically what's going on in place right now, if you have any questions. Questions for Chris? Um, Chris, what's your senior transition project? Uh, I'm working, uh, it, it's actually split up into two parts. Uh, the first uh, component is uh, working at Susan Collins' office, uh, her re-election office. Uh, the second component is we're making actually, uh, with, with uh, four, with three, of my friends were making a, a documentary um, about the senior transition projects in general uh, to present to uh, future classes so they have a better idea of you know what what people have done before them and what uh, you know what the project's all about basically 
Other comments or questions? Oh, one quick one, George. Uh, Chris, I'm not going to be here next month um, when I believe you and Dave will be doing your final report. So I just wanted to wish both of you well and thank you for doing an outstanding job and reporting to us all year long. I'm sure you, there'll be plenty of kadoos at the next meeting, but uh, again, I won't be there. Uh, and unfortunately, I won't be around for graduation either. So good luck and all the best. Well, yeah, it's been a pleasure. On Dave's behalf, I'll, I'll say thank you uh, and mine. Um, and um, yeah, and we'd actually, I, that, that brings me to another uh, issue um, I forgot to mention. Um, the SAC elections were held uh, and the people who will be replacing Dave and I, um, and I believe this is right, I counted the votes, but you know, so many numbers and people are going through my head. Uh, it was, uh, I, I believe it's Aaron McKenney and Hillary Wymont will be replacing us. So um, maybe they will join us next time. Um, it's kind of a changing of the guard, if you want to call it that. And, and we definitely liked it. It's been a pleasure doing it, and um, we've really enjoyed it. So thank you very much. So you will be back next month? Yeah, I plan okay. uh, I mean, maybe Dave has another, uh, well, I guess it's will be, be over by then. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll be back next month. OK, great. Well, we'll, we'll save our other comments for that. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> any other questions? Thanks, Chris. Good job. Thank you. Now we'll have comments um, from our middle school representatives. Hello, my name is Lily Hoffman, and I am one of the school board representatives from the middle school. Um, our school has begun <coughs> our countdown, and we have 24 days left. Um, Sports are now underway in lacrosse, baseball, and softball seem to be very popular and are also very successful. Um, many of my peers have been talking to me about the late starts, <clears throat> and they are all thoroughly enjoying the extra hours before school. The eighth grade band on Friday, May 3rd, marched in the Special Olympics that was held down at the high school track, and the kids participating in the Special Olympics really enjoyed it. and. The band members also had a good time despite the freezing weather. Also on the subject of music, the fifth and sixth grade concerts were just held and our band teacher, Mr. Wright, and uh, the kids that participated in it were very happy of their performance. And the seventh and eighth grade spring concerts are underway and by going to the rehearsals, it looks like those are going to be a great concert. Hi. Um, also, coming up in the eighth grade is the community service project, and I know in the past they've gone to back to Chiwanki, but this year we're going to pr stay pretty close to home, and we'll be working on restoring like land trust trails. And also, the sixth grade one group just went to Chiwanki, and another group is there this week. And from what I've heard, there have been a lot of sixth graders that have come back really happy with the experience, and that they've done a lot of new things they've never done before. Also, coming up is Spirit Week is next week, and we're going to have Color Day, Flashback Day, Sports Day, Twin Day, and Pajama Day, so that's always fun for us. And just again, what Liz said, the 20-something days of school is getting pretty exciting for everyone in the middle school, and you can really feel the excitement. Okay. Um, questions or comments for uh, Lily or Brianna? And well, you? I would just add my... Uh, my thanks to both of you, and uh, for some reason in the back of my head, I think there was someone else who's been at some of these meetings, but um, thanks very much. You've done a great job. Hope you have a super summer, and uh, perhaps you'll be back again sometime when you're in high school. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. And you'll both be back next month, is that right? <laughs> yes. I think, uh, if I count the days right, I think you'll be here next month. Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Good job. We're going to move on now to communications. Uh, just two items in your packet, uh, teacher resignations and at the high school, uh, Sarah Gridley, and at um, Hong Kong School, uh, Rebecca Sawyer. Okay. Um, just an additional item under communications. I believe that the swearing in of the new town councilors and uh, school board members will happen between now and our next formal meeting. So I wanted to recognize that, um, that I believe that this is uh, J Jim Rowe's uh, last uh, school board meeting. He's smiling. He's got a big smile on his face, so I must, <laughs> I must actually be right. And um, I just wanted to uh, recognize Jim for the good work that he's done. He's been a hard worker 
uh, and has uh, taken on some tough issues um, with a, a great deal of energy and a great deal of passion. Um, I think uh, I speak for the other board members and I certainly will let them uh, have their say um, when I say that we, uh, Jim has been a very well-respected uh, member of the board and uh, it certainly has been a, a pleasure um, to uh, have his uh, service and involvement with this board. So on behalf of the board and the school community, I certainly want to thank you. Uh, we will have you back in June so I, I, um, because we do have a bit of a presentation there, but I want to recognize that this is the last formal meeting of your term. Other comments from uh, board members? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I knew immediately I was right as soon as I looked over there. So. Well, and he still smiled. Yeah. I can't stop smiling. No. I'll save my comments till next month, too. Okay. Marie, did you? Yeah, I, other than it, I think I'm really going to miss you on the board, and it's been great for the last three years having you. Thank you. It's just flown right by. And again, since I won't be here next month, um, Jim, where I grew up, we call people like you a mensch. Uh, translation is, I guess, good people. I've enjoyed working with you, and uh, I'm going to miss you. You're a mensch, too. How's that? <laughs> right back at you. As you see, the color is not rising, I don't think, so obviously it's not as bad as you thought it was. <laughs> Okay, enough of this name call. We're going to move on. We're all <laughs> all yeah. We'll save some for next month. Um, comments from the public? Have any? Seeing none, I'm going to move on um, to uh, one of my favorite parts of the school board meetings, which is uh, recognition. And we do have a, uh, a list of individuals. We we would like to recognize tonight, and um, George and I moved down to the podium and go up. The first individual uh, we would like to recognize is someone who has given an awful lot of time to this school district. And in my conversations over the last three years um, since I've been here with um, our school nurses, um, just go on and on about how valuable um, Jeff Safer, Dr. Jeff Safer, has been to this school district. And this is just a small way. Um, and we, we tend to just take for granted the time that he gives to us, but this is just a small way for us to recognize as a school community his contributions. And we do have a certificate that reads, the Cape Elizabeth School Board presents this award for outstanding contributions to Jeffrey Safer in recognition to your commitment to the students of the Cape Elizabeth Schools as the Cape Elizabeth School Department School Physician. In appreciation on behalf of the Cape Elizabeth School Board, Signs George Entwistle the third and Thomas Versal, Superintendent. Jeff, would you come up, please? Thank you all very much. I'll be very brief. I just, it's very hard to sum up um, many years of, of working with uh, the school nurses. Uh, but I've lived in Cape Elizabeth for 29 years and have been a family physician here for 25 years. Um, it's been an ongoing highlight of my professional career uh, to act as school physician. Uh, my involvement as a consultant, an advisor, mentor, and reviewer of policies has been a pleasure due to the professionalism, dedication, and compassion of the school nurses going back to the early days of Darlene Ayers and Julie Salikas, right through to the present of Julie Salikas, <laughs> Paula Harris. Yeah. School health is no longer Band-Aids and aspirin, although there's still a lot of that. And the days of uh, group examinations and cough twice are long gone. 
now we deal with issues of emergency protocols, trauma care, dispensing many medications, alcohol and substance abuse issues, the repercussions of catastrophic illness and even death, preventive health and stress reduction for students and staff. We're truly fortunate to have a dedicated team of school nurses and aides in a community and school board that honors and dialogues with those involved in the trenches, caring for the physical and emotional needs of both our students and staff. With this continued teamwork, we can best meet the challenges of the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. been uh, elected to help with these other awards have you since it's your last meeting. <laughs> I get to watch this. Just don't mess up any of the uh, <laughs> order. Don't want to be a mention. <laughs> Our next category of recognition um, involves two students who have been recognized for their achievements uh, in the U.S. Olympics physics team qualifying exam. And I learned of this um, from a presentation that uh, Dr. Efren had done for the school board regarding the Physics First program um, so that I can not give, I want to make sure that due credit is given for this accomplishment. So I see Michael out in the audience and I, I do want to give this proper recognition. So would you mind, Michael, if you just came and two minutes explained what this award means, because I know it is a pretty, pretty big accomplishment. Each, <clears throat> each year, I think for the last 26 years, uh, there's a national competition for students who are interested in trying to get on the United States Physics Olympic team. You probably didn't know we had a Physics <laughs> Olympic team. And we do. And uh, it turns out that our, um, that our United States Physics Olympic team does very well in the international competition. Last year, we came in second place in the world. Um, <clears throat> so. Was this so probably about the top 2,000 students in the country take the uh, qualifying exam for the U.S. Olympic team? And um, this year, out of, that, out, of, out of those top students, there were 188 across the entire nation that made it to the final round. And of those 188 students, uh, two were our students. Thank you. And the certificate reads, a certificate of recognition and first student presented to Stephanie Reed. The certificate is presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board in recognition of your outstanding academic achievement on the U.S. Olympics physics team qualifying exam. And the second recipient, same certificate, is Daniel Geyer. <clears throat> now, um, this next group of individuals um, were involved with uh, a community service project. And I think in this day and age, the kinds of things that we're experiencing across this country, it is, it's great to see individuals get involved with offering something back to the community. Um, and again, so that I give due recognition, uh, Ted, Ted Jordan, I know you're in here somewhere. Would you mind just explaining what these students were able to do? 
Good evening. Uh, back in February, our economics class was visited by Cale Warren of Rent-A-Husband fame. Cale and I went to high school together many years ago in Greeley. And Cale um, offered it this year for the first time a competition between local area high schools. Uh, he gave all the local area high schools who chose to participate 200 bucks seed money uh, with the caveat that whatever they raised would go towards benefiting Camp Sunshine. Camp Sunshine, for those of you who do not know, uh, is a camp for families of critically ill children. And there are, the families are allowed to stay for one week free up on Sebago Lake. Um, so these students who will be coming up momentarily um, teamed up with Chef Will Berrio from SMTC's uh, Culinary Arts School to put on a, a benefit dinner. And our honored guest was Governor Angus King. Um, and we had um, a small but mighty contingent uh, come up for our dinner. And these students who you're going to see momentarily um, not only raised over 3,200 bucks, um, and combined with the other five schools who participated, uh, raised $20,000. So 13 families will be staying at Camp Sunshine uh, this summer. But these same students also put on a first class meal. Uh, it, it was phenomenal. Uh, all the people who left that night made that comment. So that was, um, that was the uh, contest that these guys participated in. And uh, that's why they're here recognized tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Dave. And my guess is, I know several of the students were not able to be here, so I will call out the names. If you are here, come up and receive your certificate. And it does read, Cape Elizabeth School Board presents this award for outstanding accomplishment. And the first is to Travis Witham in recognition of your outstanding accomplishment as a volunteer fundraiser for Camp Sunshine. An appreciation on behalf of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. It's Travis here. The next award for Camp Sunshine participation, Burgess Everett. Elizabeth Arnold. <laughs> Carly Fortunato. Miriam Markowitz. They're all, probably off doing some more cooking. <laughs> Josh Safer. Accepting <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of Scott. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt Barton. Joe Hendrickson. Is it? Robert Needleman. <laughs> Addie Rintel. Alain Khan. <laughs> Jamie Strout. Whitney Howe. David Reed. Laura D'Angelo. Last one, I know I don't see Aaron here, is Aaron Spaulding. Thank you all very much for your contribution. How'd I do, George? You did great. Uh, we're going to move on to the uh, superintendent's report, and 
a couple of updates. First on the um, future directions planning and uh, then secondly on the Education Foundation. Uh, just quickly on future direction planning, uh, the annual retreat um, has been scheduled for June 7th. Notices will be going out on that. The major emphasis for this annual retreat is to take a look at all the action plans that have been implemented for this year, um, review what has been accomplished, and set a schedule for next year as far as an impl implementation. Um, our Education Foundation uh, continues to make great progress. Uh, the Foundation held an all-day retreat uh, a couple of weeks ago where they really uh, took a look at um, issues that they were going to deal with, um, uh, hired a facilitator to work with them, and um, I think we'll be, we'll be seeing in the beginning of a capital campaign in the fall from that group, and we'll be hearing uh, much more in terms of um, what kinds of activities will be sponsored by that foundation. And their hope is to gather up some seed money um, in the next few months and from that be able to, to sponsor um, some initial projects. They also had um, uh, Andy Gohegan and um, um, some of the other officers had visited the schools and asked for what they called dream sheets. And it was phenomenal the response. Um, from the staff about the kinds of things they, they think that the foundation might be able to do, the kinds of projects that they would be interested in. Um, and there's, a, there's list after list and, and project after project and some of them that are really creative. So that's, I think they really gave um, a real impetus to the, to the foundation that, that we really need to get going on this because there are so many good things that can happen from that. The next item on is, uh, has to do with uh, Mark Pandarvis and his trip and if you remember at uh, a meeting when this trip was approved there was a request for Mark to return and give a report so Mark is back excuse me Mark before you start did you say the future direction is June 7th <coughs> June 7th 7th okay <coughs> sorry <laughs> as MacArthur said I, I shall return <laughs> <laughs> I, I Confucius also said, uh, picture speaks louder, something about a thousand words anyways. So rather than say a thousand words, I, I took the uh, school's digital camera down with me, and I thought you'd enjoy a few photos of this. Gary Lenoir was kind enough to set this up for me today, and I'm going to attempt technology. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have two students that are going to be sharing as well. I don't think you have to move unless you don't want to be blind. Gary Lenoy told me this takes about a minute to warm up the bulb. Midnight in Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Would you please that more white? It'll get brighter. This is actually the Portland jet port uh, the night we took off uh, to go down there. They're coming into view now. I, came, I went down to 10 students. Uh, they were juniors and seniors. And two seniors, no, one senior. He was the only one, Burgess Everett, and, uh, and nine juniors. And we went down to a town called Liberia, Guanacaste, which is in the northern part of Costa Rica is an exchange program with the school down there. And it was a great time. There was not one hitch the whole way, um, except for I had to bring my crutches because I broke my ankle in February. That was probably the only problem I had. Uh, my doctor made me take it. But let me run through this with you. There's everyone at the airport leaving. This was our hotel the first night. Uh, there's a lot of converted houses that are hotels in Costa Rica. Uh, this is the next morning. That's Spanish up there. <laughs> uh, this was a gentleman that drove us four hours from San Jose to our location where we were going to meet our families in Liberia and Guanacaste. Um, and we went to a parochial school run by nuns. Um, so of course they had pictures everywhere. 
and they were wonderful, and they, they liked us a lot too. All of our students attended the classes um, that were there most of the day. We had some days that we took off and did different things, which you'll see pictures of, but the majority of them were in a lot of these classes, and I'm sure that Camille and Kenji will tell you maybe one or two things about that. It was very good for the students to be in those classes with the, uh, with the other students. Here's Dave learning on his computer. <laughs> um, they had quite a wonderful school there. They had quite a few resources. This is a, the history class. Of course, there's somebody with different hair in the audience there. These are some shots. That's, uh, that's your younger sister, isn't it? Camille, that you stayed with. Camille lived outside of the town we were in, about 25 kilometers. And, uh, so she had a very different experience in one way from all the kids that were in the main town of uh, Libedia. That's Emily Slack, who uh, wasn't able to be here tonight with her host sister. Then while we were there, they had a national day uh, honoring, of all things, uh, a victory over Nicaragua. And the interesting thing about that was that there was an American who was at that time president of Nicaragua, William Walker. <laughs> And this was celebrating the victory over that American. But we had uh, James Donahue play the trumpet and uh, Dave Faherty on the violin. And Dave did a magnificent performance of Home on the Range <laughs> on his violin and everyone loved it. There's Dave. I didn't take that picture. That's Dave sideways. <laughs> There's Mike Palin. He was also another participant. Palin. Um, we went horseback riding on one of the farms with uh, Casey Dunphy, stayed with a family that had an incredibly huge farm in this one valley. Um, this is a, uh, we went up and visited with, these are all the students that we stayed with. Uh, we were right near volcanoes, a line of volcanoes, and we went up one day to where the water actually comes up out of the volcano. Um, and then we went to some swimming pools and found this creature. Uh, that's me, hard at work, grinding cane, sugar cane juice. That's a delicacy, which none of the kids liked. Uh, there was monkeys all over the place. These, this was an interesting gentleman we met who had found a lot of artifacts and who kept them in his closet. Uh, <laughs> had a lot of interesting people in Costa Rica. Of course, we had some fun while we were there, too. There's Kenji. Uh, this is a trip around a volcano that we took. Of course, you know, I was only with the kids many times when they were all as a group having fun. So these are all the photos that I've got are the fun photos. But they did spend a lot of time in the culture with the families. So um, that's lunch somewhere. That's one of the volcanoes that was there. This is Heart of Palm. I don't know if you've ever eaten it or ever had it. Palmito, they call it. And uh, it's almost like artichoke heart. It's a real delicacy while we were driving around. The gentleman we, we were with jumped out of the car, took a machete, chopped it off, and gave us all a bite. Um, there's a monkey <laughs> that Casey's got. This is our last day at school, and I took a number of these shots. Uh, these are the families, the friends that they stayed with. They made good friends there, and many of the kids are on uh, AOL Messenger. What's it called? Instant Messenger. Instant Messenger. And the kids down there are on it too. And I've had many of the kids say that they connect all the time with these kids that are down there. There's David Faherty with the boy he stayed with, Katie Malia with the girl she stayed with, Mike and Jasmine. There's uh, two wonderful students of ours, Burgess and James. <laughs> Burgess is a little tired in that picture. This was our host teacher, Marta Mireo, who organized the trip from that side. And they're thinking about coming up here at reciprocally, reciprocally, I think I said that right, in January of this year. There's Kenji. And that's one of the sisters. She taught the religion classes, which the students attended to as part of that school. This was the last day, saying goodbye. And then we went up into the rainforest. That's a picture of all the different chrysalis, chrys I'm not a scientist. Chrysalis. Chrysalis. Yeah, all kinds. We went to a butterfly farm. There's Dave with a tarantula on his arm. Uh, there's the tarantula again. There's, I think that's, is that Dave or you? They're eating bugs that taste like pepper. And then we've, they were offered these bugs and they ate them. Uh, 
that's a quetzal, which is the most famed bird in, in South America. And we, the, the guy we were with the, was our tour guide, was wonderful. He was actually a master's in biology, spoke four languages fluently, did filming for German companies, and he helped us find this bird, uh, which many people go up there and they never see. Then we went to finish it off, we did the canopy tour. Uh, which we were 500 feet above the canopy floor on cables going 1,200 feet uh, or more. And you'll see a picture of one of them. <laughs> that's how we finished off the trip, uh, right there. Adios Costa Rica. So, here you go. There's that section of it. And then I also invited Camille Earnshaw and Kenji Tavari to share some things also about Costa Rica. So which one of you would like to go first? Hi. Um, as you said, we went down to Costa Rica and we, for the first weeks we lived with uh, host families who we went to school down there because it's an exchange program and the classes were pretty interesting, a little bit boring, but it was neat to hear them speak in Spanish and some of the stuff I understood. And I lived in a host family that lived a little bit out of the city, so I had some good experiences with them. We went a lot of different places. We went to some waterfalls that were, there was lots down there. And I got to see a bullfight, which I had never seen before. And we went to lots of different thermal pools, and we saw a volcano. One, one of them was active, so I got to see lava and stuff, so that was really neat. We just saw lots of um, different wildlife, and there were lots of little customs, customs that were really neat down there. Like when you introduced each other, you kissed each other on the cheek, so that was really nice. And just everyone down there was really friendly, and they were really excited to have us down there, and I'm really glad that I got to go. Thanks. Go ahead, James. All right. Um, well, I just want to say that I really enjoyed this trip a lot. It was... Uh, <laughs> big life experience for me, a culture shock actually. Um, just the lifestyle that they carry down there was different, well obviously different, but just not what I'm used to and uh, I just love my family so much down there, they're just great, they're really kind and friendly and uh, I have to say, but the first three days of my trip I was actually sick, so that part I didn't enjoy very much and the whole time I was down there Actually, my fa my family, my girl spoke really well, very good. If I can speak English, uh, very good <laughs> English, and uh, good. <laughs> she uh, told me that she couldn't speak English to me because her parents wouldn't let her. So because they wanted me to learn how to speak better Spanish, so I said all right. And so for the first two days, I keep saying my throat hurts really bad, and she, they'd all start laughing at me, and I was like, what's so funny? And, then finally at the dinner table one day I said it one more time and they started bursting out and finally Natalia, who's my host, uh, sister, that's what you want to call her, uh, told me that I was saying I have a pain in my turtle. And so I finally like, <laughs> 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 got it. So, yeah. Those were the many, many things that uh, happened to me down there. It was actually a lot of fun. Um, do, I do miss them a lot, but I, I am keeping in touch with them. Uh, just, it was great, and um, I guess on behalf of the rest of the students that couldn't make it tonight, I'm sure they would have said the same thing. And just I hope this trip can continue every year because it was great. It was awesome. That's it. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Jenny. Watch out for your turtles. <laughs> Well, I'd like to thank the school board also for allowing us to, to do this. And uh, D David Perry and I are, are talking about maybe doing something next year as well, which we'd like to present to you, but not, not tonight, maybe in the next school board meeting, um, since the Celtics are playing, as you've all reminded me. Um, so I want to thank you all again, and I trust that this presentation has uh, been to your liking. Oh, questions? <laughs> Thank you, Ken. I have one. Yeah. They're coming in January. They're thinking, yeah, that's, and, that's. I mean, they know what it's like up here in January. <laughs> <laughs> we brought pictures down. Yeah, we showed them, and, and we thought that that would be a good time for them. Actually, that's probably on, the only time that they can visit because the way that Costa Rican vacations break out, they end school in December and then they start February 1st. Um, so that's really the only window of time for them to come for an extended period of time. 
So we'll have to. Uh, doing a clothing and a boot drive. For <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I, yeah, I'm definitely doing something like that because they can't buy that kind of stuff in Costa Rica. <laughs> Other questions from the board? This is, um, thanks Mark for coming back and thank you for sharing um, your experience. It's what makes it worthwhile for us to kind of get this feedback. We hear about all these great trips and um, so we've begun to ask uh, um, for some reports back and I, I don't think we're going to stop asking for those reports because it's, it's very gratifying to hear about the experiences. Thank you. Um, I guess we'll move on to um, Ted, and uh, you have a report in terms of the high school economics students' trip to New York. Yes, and you'll notice on the agenda it says, report from Ted Jordan and high school economics students, but they collected the hardware and left. <laughs> so I will give the report. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, we took a trip, the same group that was just up here a few minutes ago, took a trip to um, New York City back in the middle of March. Um, and we left here on a Wednesday after school and traveled to Southern Connecticut uh, and stayed in um, a hotel there. And I'm sure Mark will agree with me that the best thing about that night was it was uneventful, um, <laughs> quiet. <laughs> and uh, we took the train from, um, I think it was Milton, Connecticut, uh, Milford, Connecticut, excuse me, down to New York City the next day into Grand Central Station. And from there, uh, took the subway down to the financial district. And I tell you all this because I think as enjoyable as the uh, trip to the stock exchange was, it was the cultural experience of being in the city and traveling by train and traveling by subway and, and seeing Grand Central Station. But uh, the reason we went down is we spent an hour and a half at um, the brokerage firm of Vandermoulen. Um, we, this is the second time we went down. You folks granted us uh, the right to go down about a year and a half ago. It was just after the 2000 election. and. Um, just a small, I know you were here, you were here till 11 o'clock last night, so I'll try to keep this brief. Um, when we went down that last time in 2000, um, the brokerage firm that we went to um, was a different one. And when I called up, I think it was in late February, early March, to make the arrangements to go down again, I was having a tough time getting through to this one broker uh, who had, had hosted us last time. And finally got through to the only other person that I met on that trip, which was uh, another, another broker down there. And when I finally got him, I said, hey, Artie, I've been trying to get a, get a hold of uh, Kevin for a while now. What's the story? And, and he said that the, the firm that Kevin's family had started and owned had been bought up by Vandermull, and, and, and Kevin was now retired at my age. Um, so good for Kevin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Artie, the, the other man that I uh, was talking to the phone, made the connection so that we could go down and visit. And he entertained us on the top floor of the firm, 32nd floor, uh, for about an hour and a half, um, taking all the questions um, that the students had. His firm is one of the, the few remaining firms that are specialists in the stock market. So um, it was uh, just a unique experience for them to have that point of view and to hear his spiel and to be able to give him all the questions they had. And following that visit, we went from there uh, through the tight security, as I'm sure you can imagine, to get to the members gallery of the New York Stock Exchange. Now prior to September 11th, any tourist could go down and take a tour of the Stock Exchange and to do so, you would wait about an hour probably in line and go up two floors behind glass windows looking down, as I said, about two floors onto the floor of the exchange. The members gallery is at ceiling height and it's open air. And um, by the way, the, the, the other um, the visitors gallery is now closed since September 11th, has not reopened so far as I know because of the, the catastrophe that day. Um, but we spent about another hour in the members gallery, um, again just taking in all the sights and sounds and smells and uh, it was a quiet day there and so uh, it was a chance for Artie and, and one other broker to, to take again any questions we had to point out the various things on the floor which despite the videos and the best lesson plans that I have could never really capture uh, what those folks witnessed that day. Uh, that was the main reason we went down, but we finished that tour at about one, went down and grabbed uh, lunch uh, near the Brooklyn Bridge, and then took um, and made the pilgrimage, which I think any citizenship course should, should require, which was a trip to Ground Zero. And we hooked up with Cape alumni John Chapman, who's an NYU student, and he escorted us up there. Um, and although, again, it was ostensibly an economics trip, um, I'm so glad we had the opportunity 
to do that. Um, we, we walked around, and I don't know how many of you have been down there since September 11th. Again, this was mid-March, but it, is a, it was at that point a 16-acre um, just construction pit. Uh, and the most remarkable thing about that, uh, since all the wreckage is now gone, was to see the, the buildings that are still standing and to see how scarred they are. And again, this is a tremendously big area. Um, there's still all sorts of um, signs and wishes and, and pictures hanging up, at least there was again in mid-March, around the church. I think it's the church right there, Trinity Street, um, welcoming and encouraging other firefighters who've come down. And uh, we wrap the trip up by uh, going up to Times Square, another cultural experience and then catching the train out and getting home late that evening on Thursday night. Um, but I want, I'm glad to have the opportunity, George, to come back here before this, uh, this body and to say thank you. Uh, it was a trip worth missing a day of school. It, it really um, it, it achieved more than I could ever possibly hope to in a classroom. So thank you. Did you have any questions? <laughs> yeah. These students, were they able to get Rolex watches on the street like your last trip? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. <laughs> I reminded them that Rolex is spelled with two X's and not three in case they <laughs> Other questions for Ted? Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for your good work with these uh, students in that class. Terrific. Um, we are going to move on uh, to the principal's report, and I'm sure there's somebody who just can't believe that we finally got there. Um, uh, and and uh, Tom, I'll ask you to um, do your uh, introduction. Before I introduce the principal today, you're probably aware we've had this tradition for five or six years about uh, anyone in grades K through four attempting to do my job. Actually, um, it's been a nice tradition. We always do it in the springtime. And this year, Jonathan Bass, who could more than speak for himself, was principal for uh, today. And I was really impressed. I think he should be proud of himself, and his family should be very proud of him. Even his twin sister might have a good word. <laughs> but uh, John's prepared to speak for himself. Hi, my name's John Bass, and I was principal for a day. It was fun walking around to the different classrooms, seeing the different kids. It felt good when the first graders cheered for me <laughs> when I said it was outdoor recess when they were eating lunch in the cafetorium. The first graders would run by and wave to me, then run back and wave to me again. <laughs> All the kids were acting very well. I enjoyed being principal. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> so it was a nice brief report, so we really liked that. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I suspect that we probably do have some questions. Well, my daughter came home today and said that she had 16 or 17 pieces of gum and her jaw really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that was due to you. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Jonathan, what were some of the other uh, rules that you had as a principal? Well, you can call your teacher by your first name if it's all right with them, and eat bowl of gum and candy. Um, you can wear a hat. Um, you can sit anywhere in the cafetorium, and increasing of recess. From the weather. Sounds like it was a fun day. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to ask John the same question that I asked last year's uh, principal for the day. You've had some experience in the job now. How much do you think we should be paying our Pond Co. principal? <laughs> <laughs> Our Ponco principal. <laughs> um, Twenty-five, thirty dollars. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's a smart answer. <laughs> Other questions for John? 
Would you like to um, do it more frequently? Yeah, and, it was a really fun experience. You don't think you'd get maybe tired of it and everybody would well, get tired of chewing gum? and classroom saying the exact same thing can get really tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you had a great day. Thanks for your report. You did a really good job. Thank you. It's a very hard act to follow, Jeff, but it's now our report from the high school. Um. Yes, I'm not going to try to uh, imitate that. That was, uh, can't be beaten. Um, I wanted to um, acknowledge a couple of students who last Tuesday, I think it was last Tuesday evening, um, I, there's an annual event that the Western Maine Conference sponsors, and they've been doing it for several years, where they ask each school in the Western Maine Conference to designate two seniors uh, to receive what they call their citizenship award. And it's for two outstanding seniors based on scholarship and based on citizenship. So last Tuesday night, I had the pleasure of, of eating dinner um, at Verillo's uh, with two of our outstanding seniors, Elizabeth Sprague and Dan Chevenel, uh, who were the recipients this year. It was a, it was a very pleasant evening. Um, it was Ken Nye from the University of Southern Maine gave a wonderful, wonderful talk, and it was just a great time to uh, get to get to get to talk to those students, those young men and women, in a, in a really sort of relaxed, informal atmosphere. They really shining examples of the kind of students that Cape Elizabeth produces. It really was impressive. Um, I wanted to elaborate a little bit on Senior Prank Day, because I wasn't aware of this tradition um, until Friday, <laughs> Friday morning when I was giving the uh, intercom announcements. Well, actually, I, I knew something was coming, because there were a few students who decided it would be really neat to drive their lawnmowers to school. Uh, so some of you may have seen uh, lawnmowers being driven by Cape Elizabeth High School seniors, either up or north or south on Route 77, depending on where they lived, and they occupied prime positions in the senior parking lot for the day. Um, but partway through the announcements, all of a sudden we began the, the switchboard began to light up with questions about why was there music coming over the intercom while we were trying to give announcements. And I really didn't have an answer for that, but we, I sort of got clued in pretty quickly to Senior Prank Day, and we figured something was going on. Um, I did want to just mention, uh, since this will resonate a little bit with the school board, that there is a strong rumor that Chris Roy may or may not want to comment on, that he and the other school board representative, believe it or not, uh, had a very direct role in, in installing a radio transmitter inside of our uh, PA box in the main office uh, at a time which I will not disclose, um, but it was actually a very clever prank. It was a lot of fun. Um, they got to us, and we turned the intercom system off, and then if I understand correctly, their batteries ran out. <laughs> So then, we, so then we went to Plan B, but they did have quite a, an announcement at the end of the day and some music that went over the intercom system as well. There were some mice, Chris failed to mention. Mark Tinkham's role in the collection of about a dozen mice who were let go in the cafeteria at Cape Elizabeth High School. And I am proud to know, I am proud for you to know, that Mark Tinkham had them in a box housed and safely stored within about a minute and a half. <laughs> what a visual. <laughs> you, you need to be careful of, of the challenge that that then created. <laughs> it was, it, I, was, I was actually quite stunned. It did present us for a few moments with a, the sort of the humane question of what do you do with these mice who have been let free in the cafeteria. Uh, fortunately, there were some, some nice uh, students uh, who had an interest in taking some mice home. Some, and uh, they did find some nice, humane places to be for that evening, and I'm sure they're still around. Um, so anyway, that's hap that happened. We did have an unfortunate incident. Chris did mention one, one incident that I was not happy with, and I, don't have any, and I do not believe it was any senior who did this. I think it was one of our, um, one of our underclassmen uh, aspiring to be a senior who decided to pull a fire alarm that day, which was not appreciated at all. Uh, we're working with the police to try to figure out who that was. Uh, but that, the good news is that was not in any way associated, as far as I can tell, with the seniors. 
Uh, the senior transition project is well underway. Uh, there's some really great projects that students are working on, and um, later in the year, just before graduation, some seniors are going to be giving some reports in the evening, and school board members will be invited to those just to get a flavor of the kind of things that some of the seniors are doing. You will get invitations about that. Uh, because I missed the, because I was at the Western Maine Conference banquet with Elizabeth Sprague and Dan Chavanel, I was unable to attend the Cape Coalition meeting about adolescent drinking that got some uh, and substance abuse that got some well-deserved coverage. It's a real issue. Uh, it's a it's a real big issue in the community, and I'll. I don't mean to end on a down note, but I, 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 but I wanted to mention this. I read, in, I read the, uh, the current article about what, what was said in, at the uh, forum, and one of the things that has struck me about the community is that there is drinking and substance abuse that takes place in every school in the, in the state. There is no doubt that that is true. Um, one of the things that I find uh, concerning is that my sense is, and it, and when Keith Weatherby met with parents at the beginning of the year of Parents of Athletes, uh, it struck me how powerfully he came across to parents uh, about the role of parents in, in, in some cases, condoning that behavior and in some cases turning a blind eye uh, to that behavior, either because they don't, just don't want to say no, they want to be friends, <coughs> or because uh, they don't want their students' reputations to be damaged or tarnished or a price to be paid. And I think that's really unfortunate. To me, that's what is the unique and sort of concerning aspect. I'm sure it's not completely unique, but it's, it's a real concern. So I was glad that the Cape Coalition uh, did that coverage, and I was glad that the current provided uh, a lot of coverage for that event. It sounded well worth attending. Any questions? Questions for Jeff? I have a no, go ahead. quick question. Um, can you um, update us as to what, if anything's going to be done for the incoming eighth grade incoming ninth graders. Um, yeah, we just had a, a meeting about that um, today, as a matter of fact. Um, and our current plan is, um, although the tradition has been to do a, a step-up day in the, in, the, in the spring, and there, there are some benefits to that. Uh, the feedback I had gotten uh, about step-up day and having seen it in other schools, I could, I could sort of visualize it, is that it tends to be a day which is a, a little bit of a chaotic feel to it. Uh, and although it can increase the comfort level of students in the school, um, it, it's, not, it's not necessarily presenting the high school um, in the way that we want the high school to be presented uh, to, seen, to, to incoming freshmen. So what we're planning on doing, and I have to, we did have a, a meeting today about this, and I have to talk to Tom about it, is having a very extended uh, first day of school, perhaps for freshmen only, um, on the first day of school, and we're planning uh, a morning meeting with parents talking about activities, um, giving students a tour of the school, and perhaps as much as a full day uh, for freshmen to get used to the school in the fall uh, in a way that, that presents the school in the way I think that it deserves to be presented and should be presented. So that's what we're planning to do right now. Yeah. Um, Kevin? Um, I've got two. One's a question, one's a comment. Uh, yep. I'll start with the comment because it's uh, kind of a down note, uh, excuse me, uh, with the question that's sort of on the downside. And Jeff, do we keep any statistics on dropouts? We do. Um, I haven't looked at them recently, Kevin. I can get that information. Um, yeah, I'm not looking for an answer. To, yes, I just sir. was curious as to whether or not we maintain any kind Absolutely. of statistics there. Uh, the second one is, uh, I think, more positive, and this really applies to all of the schools, but what got me going was uh, an event at the high school. I happened to go over for elections, uh, completely forgetting that there was an art display out in the, uh, around the cafeteria area, and uh, spent a lot more time uh, looking at the artwork than I did voting. Um, and while I was there, there were some, some other people there walking around uh, expressing the usual how talented our students are. And it occurs to me that uh, part of what we're really looking at is how talented our teachers are, that they are so able to bring out the talents of our students. So to all the teachers who are so talented and bring out the very best in our students, thank you. It, remind, it reminded me of why I do what I do with the school board. It was a wonderful show. And I needed it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful show. <clears throat> Other questions, comments? Thanks, Jeff. And uh, not 
last but not least, the middle school and Nancy. Good evening. Uh, right now, we're in the midst of Chiwanki time. And last week, 80 of our sixth graders were at Chiwanki and enjoyed wonderful spring weather. Um, had a bit of a challenge with a rainstorm on Thursday night, but um, had a wonderful week. This week, we have the group that could be testing rain gear for local supply companies of any kind of camping equipment. However, I did call Chiwanki today, and it just so happened I happened to call at the time the sun came out at Chiwanki for a few moments. And the words from Chiwanki are, uh, first of all, the Chiwanki staff is very pleased with all of our students. They said their spirits are high, they're being real troopers. They got their tents up yesterday before it started to really pour. They all stayed in their campsites last night, and sometimes when it rains heavily at Chiwanki, they will come up and sleep in the barn area or some of the cabin areas that Chiwanki uses for their summer program. But they said, none of your students wanted to do that, asked to do that, or even mentioned it in any kind of way. Um, the word was the dryers at Chiwanki have been going all day long. We've been drying socks, clothes, and sleeping bags. Um, everyone will be dry again tonight to start out um, for their next um, kind of experience. Hopefully it won't rain too hard. Um, they started the day at Central Camp with everybody having hot chocolate and getting a chance to get warm before they started out the day. Um, also, the Dot Lampson that I was talking with at Chiwanki said that um, at Chiwanki today, they had another group there that was meeting, and their meal was catered by a local restaurant in the Wiscasset era, area named Sarah's, and they had all these wrapped sandwiches, and they had some left over. And she said, you know, Nancy, being a good Chiwanki person, I didn't want the food to go to waste. And it just so happened that Charlie Carroll's Chiwanki group was in the barn doing the barn climb. And she said, I was really pleased. They helped me out and ate every one of the leftover wrap sandwiches. <laughs> so um, they are carrying on our tradition very well in Chiwanki. Um, even though the weather is difficult, I'm sure when they come back, they will know they are the group that really went to Chiwanki, this group, because they had the weather. And that's always a mark of a good Chiwanki experience. And the flavor of and the spirit of our outdoor experience, just also an announcement that we have been able to negotiate with Camp Kiev. We've been going to Camp Kiev for the last four years, and we have had the week right after Thanksgiving. Um, that's because that's the week that was available, and we were a late school joining their program, and that's what you get when you join what's left. Um, however, now as we begin our fifth year experience with Kiev, we do have a new week at Kiev. We'll be going the first week in October. October 7th through 11th. Students will come back and then have the long Columbus Day weekend and then come back and be ready for the rest of the first trimester. This is probably the earliest we would want to take students to Kiev because we use it to build a lot of camaraderie in our advisory groups in the seventh grade. This will give our students approximately six weeks of working in school in their academic programs and their advisory groups, and then they'll be heading off to Kiev for a week of that type of challenge and instruction, and then coming back to finish up the first trimester. So we're really very pleased with that. I won't stand here and tell you we won't have snow or anything like that, because we'll probably have an early October snowstorm. Um, however, it does look like it should be a better week than December 2nd through the 6th, which we were scheduled for. So we're hopeful. Right now, we are also hosting two of our former students. They are Chevrolet seniors. John Miley and Will Yeomans, they have come back to the middle school to do their senior projects from Chevres. Um, it's wonderful to see them, to talk with them, hear about their college plans, and also watch them interact with our students. And they're working um, under teacher supervision, working in small groups, one-on-one, -on -one, helping out, doing various and sundry things. Um, they're here every day, they have a big smile on their face, great role models for our students to see. So it's wonderful to have them back in the middle school. As Brianna and Lily mentioned, the eighth grade students will be beginning their community service project with the Land Trust, and they always connect with one of the seniors on the senior project, usually is working with the Land Trust as well, too. So once again, that's another great modeling experience. As we continue to get ready for the laptops, which we think might come, we don't know, but we're going to be ready anyway if they do come. Um, our seventh grade teachers are going to be going out in teams of two, to visit at Lyman Moore. Some of them will be going on May 22nd and May 29th. And what they're going to go is for a half day so that a pair will be gone in the morning and another pair in the afternoon. And we think we're going to be able to hook them up with Lyman Moore teachers who teach in the same content area that they do. So we look forward to that. 
just recently, and I know it wasn't on your notes tonight, but we did receive a note. Um, I received a copy of a letter on Monday from a longtime colleague at the middle school who's planning to retire, Gail Parker, and I certainly wanted to um, take a moment to mention her, I believe, 30 years of service to the Cape Elizabeth Middle School in various roles as a music teacher, choral director, fifth grade self-contained classroom teacher, teaching team partner, and this year as a job share person. Um, but Gail has reached a point in her life where she feels she needs to retire. Um, she's raising a second family um, and it's busy with that. I know she's a published writer and I'm sure she'll come back and share many things with us. Um, and depending upon the retirement, she'll probably also be an active candidate for our job share position um, if it remains in our budget and we can move forward with that. And finally, Jim just wanted to say to you on behalf of the middle school that we've really enjoyed working with you. Um, you've come to many of our events and it's always nice to see you there. Um, it's been nice for us working with Jim because he often talks with us about a sense of family and at the middle school we've had an opportunity to work with the entire Rowe family. Um, his wife Judy worked with our middle school parents association. Of course we've had the pleasure of Andy and Tom in our school. And I think it was just a couple years ago, our eighth grade team needed some shelves in their storage closet. And I looked in there, and there was Jim's father with one of his friends building the shelves. So um, it has truly been a family experience, Jim. We thank you for your dedication to the community and your commitment to our school. So come back and visit us. You know, you can come to meetings. They're open, Jim. Anytime, we'll find a chair for you. So thank you're, you very much. You're another match. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Questions for Nancy? I don't see any. Thank Thanks. You. We're going to move on now um, fairly quickly through some, some uh, other business policy and so on. Um, we'll start with committee reports, the Finance Subcommittee. Kevin. On April 29th, I had the school board presented their budget to the Town Council Finance Committee in, at a public hearing. The long and short of it is that um, at the end of that meeting, the Finance Committee of the Town Council recommended that our expenditure increase be capped at 4 percent, which would require us to reduce our budget proposal by $191,557. As a result of that, the entire board met, reviewed the budget, and uh, went back to the Council with a written proposal which would eliminate up to $161,000 um, in a combination of expenses and revenues uh, or reappropriation of revenues, uh, which does in fact include uh, freshman athletics uh, elimination, not elimination, but uh, elimination of funding for freshman athletics, elimination of funding for field trips, as well as either not replacing a maintenance worker and or a combination of not doing maintenance projects. We have yet to receive uh, any kind of actual response to that, which leaves us in quite a quandary at this point, and uh, we will be following up on that. Tonight we discussed that follow-up, um, and that's what most of the uh, most of tonight's meeting was spent on other than the typical housekeeping of reviewing and signing warrants. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, there is, uh, on May 28th at, I believe it's 7.30 in, the, in these chambers, there will be a public hearing um, on the entire town budget, both the town side, school side, et cetera, which is really, you know, the, the budget. And uh, we certainly hope that you will be involved and, uh, in that hearing. And I would also like to thank everyone who came out last night in support of the school budget. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. The policy subcommittee, um, Jennifer. Uh, the policy subcommittee met uh, May 1st and we pretty much reviewed all the policies and that we have here tonight, but we'll do that in unfinished business. New business. Okay. 
And your next meeting is? Uh, it's first Wednesday in? June, June 5th. June, so it'd be June 5th at noon in the Jordan Conference Room. Okay, thank you. Um, the building committee, Marie. Um, the building committee met last month um, and um, two things occurred at that meeting. Um, one was a conversation of locations of different areas um, at the high school, um, you know, by subject. And um, there was a lot of conversation of the floor plan and the information needed to get back to the staff um, to have conversations in the high school with the staff and um, with Jeff. And we will again discuss that next month. Um, and secondly, we reported back that Elaine will be um, putting together a group to present to the school board um, about the um, kindergarten decision that we need to make. And we do have a couple of months lead time to be able to get a decision from the school board at this point. And our next meeting is um, Thursday night, May 30th at 7 o'clock. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, we're going to now move into some unfinished business, um, much of which has to do with um, athletic policies that we have had a, um, a first and second, for all intents and purposes, first and second reading on, and, and we've brought them back again this month. And Jennifer, I, I guess I'll let you kind of lead the, or orchestrate that, um, that business, if you would. Um. Do we want to just take these as a block? Um, unless the titles of them, or yeah, I, I think so. Um, unless, unless anyone, um, are you planning on asking for approval of all of these this evening? Right. Okay, as they've been. Second, on the unfinished business, not the new, because those are first readings. The other ones. Okay, so um, the uh, the for the second readings, you're just going to move through these. Right. Okay. Is that acceptable to everybody? I, I think so. I think everybody has had an opportunity to have their input. And those revisions from our, our two subsequent discussions have been in, incorporated into the policy revisions. Right. There is one uh, typo on um, on one of these. <laughs> If it's just a typo, that's really, it's, it, it's well, it not substantive. Well, it was something that we talked about deleting L yeah. at our last meeting, but it didn't yeah. get deleted. So I think it was the... Um, it will be deleted. Um, it's JJJR1. The policy extends to all students involved in extracurricular. Right. That's supposed to be deleted. And we spoke about that last time. So. Um, okay, so with, other that, than that, with that change then. Right. Um, okay, DBAA authorization to commit special education funds. Uh, DFR, fundraising administrative procedures. DFAB, athletic booster organizations. DFD-R, athletic regulation, gate receipts and admissions and fundraising. GBL, personnel records. JJI, athletic policy, philosophy and beliefs. JJI-R, uh, Athletic Administrative Guideline, Philosophy and Beliefs. JJIA, um, Athletic Steering Committee. JJIF, Sanctioning of Sports. JJIG, Evaluation of coaches, JJJ-R, um, athletic rules and regulations, JJJ-R1, athletic substance abuse policy, JJJ-R2, 
the athletic contract and that's it, right? Yep. And again, I, I think it's important to note that um, along with these policies and for, for anyone who would like a copy of these policies, this is the third time that the, because um, athletics obviously is an area that, that creates quite, quite a bit of interest, there are a number of new policies that have to do with athletics and how we are organized and what people's roles are. Um, what will come along with many of these policies will, policies will be um, the creation of a booster club handbook, um, the creation of a coach's handbook, and actually we're talking about a, a student athlete's handbook which will really dovetail into some of these policies. Um, the big piece for us now is once these policies are adopted is then we need to implement them. And many of them have procedures and regulations that will be new for us. There'll be kinds of things we haven't been doing uh, as an organization. So um, for anyone who is interested, we, can, we will get those policies, especially people involved with boosters, booster organizations. Okay. Um, have a question? I, why don't, um, if you have a specific question, why don't we wait it until we get a motion and basically, Jennifer, you can present the motion given the list of policies for second reading that you've just um, reviewed, um, we need a motion um, to uh, have these approved by the board. Okay. Um, I move that we approve the above mentioned policies. Okay. Um, second? Jim? Um, Susan, you had a question? Um, it's in reference to uh, a question that Nancy raised last week where some of the language of this doesn't necessarily apply to middle school in reference to the social worker. And I just wondered if, and we don't need to do it now, but if there's a process to take it through um, and somehow make it, because it's going to be middle school policy as well, right? Actually, we changed that, that. that. We did change we that. We changed that. That's not right. And it should be on so the it, policy it committee. So it is the high that. school social worker and or middle school guidance. Or middle school guidance it just hasn't been, obviously hasn't been done here, but that was right. a change the policy committee made. Okay. And, th and that's the only thing that was not. Right. And that's just on the contract, right? There were two places that, that was noted that instead yeah. of social worker for the middle school was guidance counselor. Right. Okay, great, thank you. So basically what, what we're voting on is a motion with those changes, right. um, acceptance of these policies. Any other questions or comments about the policies as a whole? Seeing none, all those in favor? Seven zero, thanks. Um, now we're gonna move on to consideration of the school calendar for 2002-2003. Um, again, this is uh, something that's been in front of us at least, uh, I think this is at least the third time. Um, and I believe that we are ready to um, um, entertain a motion on this calendar for the next school year. Jim? I would move that we approve the 2002-2003 the calendar uh, for the school year as presented by the calendar committee. Second, Elaine, thanks. Um, questions or comments about this calendar? Did you have anything? No, just that, um, again, it, it's a calendar that um, I think makes for a smoother school year, less interruption. We, we will have in this calendar um, more student time that is uninterrupted. So uh, I think it's a calendar that will serve us well for next year, and, and really it's the direction we want to go in. Just um, th thank you to the uh, folks who participated on that. It's always, a, it's always one of those uh, great jobs that um, can get you into a lot of trouble very quickly. Uh, I think they did do a good job. I think it is an improvement. It's an evolution and sort of um, trying to figure out uh, how to build in the uh, collaborative time and the work time that the teachers need without um, interfering uh, with uh, instructional time. So um, this looks like a great improvement. Um, I think that we are at the vote. All those in favor? 7-0, thanks. We're going to move on to new business. Um, there are a couple of policies for first reading. Um, and Jen, you want to tell us what those are about? Um, the first one is IJOB. Um, and it, 
about athletic field trips i think it's somewhat response to some issues that developed this spring you want me to read it sure um cape elizabeth school board supports the concept of extended athletic competition both within maine and outside of maine when appropriate it is the policy of the cape elizabeth school board to require all athletic teams to request permission of the board before pursuing any out-of-state trip if the trip occurs during the school year or sports season furthermore the school board requires that the request be reviewed one month prior to the final decision of the board all requests should be made through the office of the athletic administrator with the appropriate paperwork in all cases finally every trip should have a very clear purpose and an explanation as to what the benefits are as opposed to the inherent cost the individual athletes who have qualified for a new england or national caliber competition due to their performance will be supplied with the limits of the budgeted amounts okay and um, then accompanying that is the uh, request form right This is um, again presented for first reading, so it's now is the time to um, that Jen is looking for some comments or input um, from other board members. Kevin. Jen, paragraph two um, requires that the request be reviewed one month prior, reviewed by the school board or reviewed by someone else. School. Uh, the school board, where we have a policy of hearing about something before we vote on it. That's what that meant to... Um... I think we just might want to make that okay. a little clearer yeah. that it's... Yeah. And I, I think in, in the board always has the right, and, and I think we've been pretty good about requesting things to come a month in advance, um, but there are always are things that happen, and you can waive that. Um, but this is at least to let all the teams know if they're requesting a trip, they need to come a month in advance. Other um, input for the policy committee? It's a little bit of a typo at the bottom there. Within is the within? No, the cape it. Okay, yes. Hmm. I never pretended it's, to you know, cape pep athletic. I, I get it. I, I get the connection, but <laughs> it's probably best cleaned up. Um, okay, this will come for a, uh, do you see what I'm talking about? Okay. No. I missed it, but I'll the bottom. Um, oh. this, will come for, <laughs> this will come for a second reading uh, next month. Consideration of a teacher's, uh, anything more on this? I'm gonna move on. Uh, consideration of a teacher's request for an unpaid leave of absence for the 2002-2003 school year. Um, you have in front of you a request from Gigi Field for a one year unpaid leave of absence. Uh, the reasons explained in the letter. Um, this is an issue that, um, as far as my research is, different things have happened over the years. Sometimes they've been approved, sometimes they haven't, and there isn't always the same rationale. Um, so it is a request. Um, and your recommendation? Someday, my recommendation would be that in this particular case, we would be able to replace this person uh, without much difficulty for that year. And due to the nature of the conversations I've had with the individual, that I would um, recommend uh, granting the leave. Okay. Um, this is something that does require a school board approval. And so. Um, I need to uh, have a motion in terms of um, Gigi Fields' uh, request for an unpaid leave from, thanks. So moved. So moved, Thank and you. those are the easy ones. Um, <laughs> and uh, a second, Susan. Um, questions or comments on this particular leave? Kevin? Uh, a comment. Um, in the past, I have voted against granting unpaid leaves of absence when the purpose of that unpaid leave may result in other employment. Um, it's my philosophy that if you want to 
take a shot at a second career that's fine and if it works out great but if it doesn't work out we shouldn't be required to have a position available for the individual although certainly if that individual is an outstanding teacher if there was an opening we would take them back so I will be voting against granting this leave okay other comments or questions about this the board I mean just a historical perspective and Kevin can share it as well but the board has in the past been more stringent I think about leaves of absence in fact at one point it was it was I think those who share the history with me know that it was very difficult in some instances to get a leave and respecting Kevin's position I guess I would say that one of the things that I feel that we've I feel we've moved as a board to being maybe adopting some looser interpretation about sometimes what our staff might need in terms of a leave of absence and I think that we've been moving in a way that's been much more liberal with that approval I mean that being said I will support this one I think it's probably the right thing to do there's probably leaves of absence that I would find myself with Kevin and not approving but I will approve this one and it's not anything necessarily we've got a whole lot of guidelines about I think we've thought tried to think about the difficulty may be created in terms of of backfilling a position for a temporary period of time we've thought about the gains that would be made for that teacher professionally educationally and so on and tried to consider that and and I think in some ways maybe in that focus of attracting and retaining the very best teachers we've moved a little bit more liberally along and I think we also have asked the superintendent to kind of be a bit of a beacon to kind of tell us where where to make that distinction so yeah George is absolutely correct that and there's no question that at one time not all that many years ago five six seven getting a leave of absence out of the school board was just about impossible and I have probably voted in the last five years for more granting more leaves than declining them so I just want everyone to know that I am not knee-jerk opposed to a leave of absence it's just that the one line I do draw for myself is if that leave of absence is intended to result in a different career I just can't vote for granting that leave okay other comments did you do you have a question all of all of come all of the comments then in I guess we're at the vote and all those approving in favor is what I meant to say that's six opposed is one and that leave will be granted Tom consideration of a proposal for shared position at the third grade level for 2002 2003 as you are aware we do have a job share process that teachers can pursue in looking at creating a job share situation and sometimes it works very well for the students and for the staff alike we presently this year we're involved with a job share at the fifth grade which has worked out very well and the proposal in front of you is is for a third grade position to teachers that are presently in the school and due to child care and other work related situations those two have proposed a job share as you are aware there is one benefit package at the share there's one salary there's not any additional cost in creating a job share and oftentimes you do get quite a bit of mileage out of two people working in the same job and again it's something that we look at it is on a year-to-year basis so this would be for a one-year trial and the individuals would have to reapply next year if to get a second year of job share okay what I need is a motion 
on this uh, propo proposal for a uh, job share? Kevin. I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination for a one-year job share. Okay. Um, a second. Jim. Uh, comments, questions? I yeah. have a question. Um, I absolutely favor this and doing this, this type of thing, but as I was reading this, it occurred to me, what, hap what happens at the end of the first year? Um, we have two people teaching one grade. Um, at the end of this first year, if it hasn't worked out, which one goes? <laughs> uh, or which one stays? Or is there some guarantee of another job for one or the other of them? No, we would, if, if we did not have positions for both individuals, it would go into the seniority list, and if one person is, is, has more seniority than the other, that would, and I think it also ties into, in this particular case, because one person is, is a probationary teacher, that would have a big impact on it. Okay. Marie, you had a question? I have a question for Tom. Um, when you had mentioned that the fifth, I think it's the fifth grade job share um, this year is going very well, what are the types of things that, that are doing well, or what are the comments that you're hearing about it? Well, I think, and in, in Nancy, feel free to, to jump in because you've, you've witnessed this. Um, I think the communication uh, between the two staff members um, and work in getting a, a, another set of eyes with that same classroom, um, the teacher might be scheduled to teach the morning session but quite often stays. Um, both teachers attend faculty meetings, so you have now two teachers, because that's a requirement of the job share that they need to be involved with that. Um, and I think there's a, a, an automatic collaboration between two individuals working with the same group of kids. Um, and it does take an awful lot of, of work for those two individuals to, to make it work well, and it does take quite a bit of time. And I think just to add to that too, all of those things are true. Plus there's a renewed energy um, for coming in and doing this, and they are able to pursue some other responsibilities in their lives in both of these cases. And in one case, when I think um, one of the job share teachers has been Allison Hawks, and one of the energies that she has had is to really um, inspire a group of fifth graders to be involved in our math club and math team and has been able to scout out and she has had to scout out some meets for them to go to and to take them to. Um, and it's not often we have those at the fifth and sixth grade level. And um, they're really excited about math and getting together to do that. And she's had energy and enthusiasm to do that um, as she's been pursuing her other interests and responsibilities. And also um, very thoroughly um, fulfilling all of her responsibilities as a teacher. They do, they have all year long, they have done the family conferences together. Um, both of them are there more than part-time. It's not a part-time, there is a real distinction with the job share. Um, they have had a really great schedule that has worked out with them. Each one of those teachers has one whole day with the class, and then they job share um, the other the mid three days of the week. So it has truly worked out. They flip their schedule at the half year to get another view on kids in the morning, kids in the afternoon, um, having the students have some classes in the morning, some in the afternoon, and it has truly been a very powerful experience for us. What about parents? Do we have comments from parents? Initially, I think, and the team, um, our teaching team took this on because it was in the fifth grade and part of transitioning to the middle school, students were prepared to go to two different teachers and have be on a team. And parents were concerned that although we were offering this class of students the same thing, the difference was these students were self-contained and the teachers moved about instead of the students moving about. And there was some concern in the beginning that how do these students get chosen? Why are they in a self-contained thing? Um, shared those concerns with his team of teachers right off, and they worked together to really talk with the parents, communicate with them frequently, that there wasn't anything more unique about this class other than on their team, the teachers moved instead of the students, and that truly is the only difference. And I think they devoted a lot of energy to that in September. They knew it was a concern, it was an issue. Um, I have not heard that as an issue since September. Other questions or comments? Um, I would just have one, Nancy, and I think that it was, uh, you know, I think we were delighted to approve the fifth grade job share. Um, I think the, the condition, or one of the conditions, not, not a stickler, 
not necessarily a, a deal breaker kind of condition, was that we, we did want to uh, get a report back. Um, we'd love it if one or both of them could, uh, could address us for five minutes or so because I think it's something that we do want to learn about in the, in the spirit of uh, um, focusing on that goal of attracting and retaining the very best. We thought it, it, it to be a good thing to do. So, Wait, Do you have a preference? Would you like them to come for a few minutes at the June that would be, um, I mean, if or they could, at the, work, the May workshop or whatever? I, I think, you know, whatever is going to would, would work for them. Sure. The June meeting would probably be most convenient, but okay. I think we did, there is an interest in mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, we're about to probably approve another one, mm -hmm. and um, we just, you know, and again, that, that we get to approve all this neat stuff, but we don't right. get to hear back. Hear back. So we want and that would actually coincide with, at that time, I would be bringing forth, if that maintains through the budget process, that we continue that job share for opportunity for another year. So right, right. That will work that would out be, very well. That would be Thank perfect. You. And it's sort of, a, I think June is our reflection time anyway, and kind of mm -hmm. some things that have worked really nicely, and we'd really like to hear about that. Okay. Um, so you think I've lost my place, but I really haven't. I know that it is time to vote. And all those in favor, 7-0. I'm going to move on to consideration of the superintendent's nominations of teachers to a continuing contract. The following um, teachers um, are being nominated for continuing contract status. Um, as you're aware, um, we do take a hard look in the first two years of all of our teachers. I, I personally visit teachers for the second year. Uh, the principals have spent a great deal of time with them and we feel very comfortable with the individuals whose names I will read off. Um, at Pond Cove School, uh, Roxy Johnston in special education, Fran Vita Taylor, grade four. At the middle school, Allison Caruso, grade six, Joanne Paquette, grade seven, Mary Smaha, instructional support, Kim Sturgeon, guidance, Holly Swenson, grade seven. And at the high school, Wynn Phillips, English. Okay, we need a, uh, a motion. Jim? I would move that we approve the, the uh, superintendent's nominations of teachers to continuing contracts. Thank you. Second? Jen? Questions or comments? Kevin? Does this represent everyone who was eligible, Tom? I mean, who had put in the time? This year, yes. So it's 100%. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Going to move on to consideration of the superintendent's nominations of teachers to a second year. Um, for probationary contracts, the following individuals uh, will be nominated. Um, from the printed list you have in front of you, there is one change because one of those individuals is on your list also as a resignation. Um, at Pond Cove School, Holly Hertel .5 has been working .5 kindergarten. At the middle school, Aaron Filio, grade 6. Carly Bean, Special Education, Sally Connolly, Grade 5, Lisa Leonard, World Language, Ryan Frasero, Grade 7. At the high school, Gretchen Anglin, Social Studies, Joycelyn Bowden, Special Education, System Wide, William Cook, Social Worker, and Denise Sullivan, Occupational Therapist. We need a motion for um, those nominations to uh, a second year of probationary contracts. Elaine? that we um, approve uh, those teachers listed for their second year of probation our Th Thank you. Um, need a second? Susan? Questions or comments? Kevin? Same question, Tom. Um, are the folks who were nominated uh, represent 100% of the teachers who might be nominated? Yes, except for the one that resigned. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Other questions? Did you have a question, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. um, Seeing none, all those in favor? Seven, z seven zero. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Don't throw me like that. Six and a half. Um, <laughs> all those in favor? Seven zero. Um, moving on to consideration of the superintendent's uh, nomination to the position of Pond Cove Guidance, um, presumably Pond Cove Guidance Counselor for 2002-2003. Yes, as you're aware, um, Due to the re retirement of, of Sarah Berman, uh, a guidance position became available at Pond Cove. This year we have been filling the position on an interim basis. Um, the school felt it was important to go through 
uh, the interview process and solicit applicants. And um, the person being nominated is Patricia White. And you have that paperwork there and the interview team's recommendation in front of you. Mm -hmm. Um, I need a motion on this. Marie, thanks. Um, I move that we um, accept this uh, nomination for Pine Cove guidance for next year. Thank you. Second, Elaine. Questions or comments on this nomination? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. George, can I make a quick comment? Yep. Uh, and this is this is comment is for all of us because we're at the uh, personnel issues type of thing, and I know this may not apply to all of us, but as I look at these lists, uh, the only names I know that I can attach to a face are Wynn Phillips and uh, Aaron Filio. Uh, I have no idea who these other people are. If I passed them on the street, I would say hello, but I certainly wouldn't know who they are, um, and I think we need to correct that. Because I've also found that in going through the schools, they don't know who I am, which is not a particularly big deal. But I, I just think it's the right thing to do for us to, if we're hiring teachers, to at least uh, see the face of the, the individual we're hiring. One of, the, one of the things that we did, and Mary probably knows this better and, and where it could fit in again, um, and I really liked it, was a, um, a little bit of a reception for our new staff. <coughs> And I think maybe we missed that in the last uh, year or so. I can't really remember exactly. Um, but it was very pleasant. And it's interesting because some of those people that I, you know, it was maybe a few years back, whatever. Um, and um, some of those people that I met and spent time with are people that I've sort of, I see, you know, I've sort of kept tabs on them. So there has been kind of more of a connection. And maybe what we could do. And I, Mary, do you remember? Was that in like in the fall or in the? I think in the fall. I think we had it in the fall. There yeah. Was, there was a small reception. In so the fall. maybe I mean, you know, Kevin's point is a good one. I, I think I am familiar with a, a number of these folks, but I, I think that, um, I think that it, maybe it's maybe it would be important to at least begin to associate some names and faces and welcome people aboard and so on. Again, keeping a focus on that important goal that we have. So maybe, Mary, if you could keep us to the, that as a schedule, that would be great. We could do it. I don't know if it's, I can't remember what we attached it to, but it was, you know, attached to something, maybe a workshop or whatever. And when we're all together and invite the new staff to, um, to spend a few minutes you know, to visit or whatever's convenient. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's great. Okay. Um, consideration of amendment to the 2002-2003 school budget adopted in the April meeting. Um, I'm a little bit at a loss yeah. <laughs> on cool. this one, but um, but it, I mean it's, it sort of would make sort of would make sense. I, I don't necessarily know that we have the option at this point to make make an adoption or make a change. I, don't know. I think it's, it was, I think it was as a result of the meetings that you had when you decided to reduce the budget to 4.6. Oh, okay, yeah, it was letter. it was in case we had to have any definite changes, but as of right now, we're awaiting right. town town council response. direction and response. So we probably we under that. amendments to the agenda, we no. probably should have eliminated that. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, with, no. Without without a response from uh, right. the council we can't or no. pr shouldn't and I think it's adopt any any of the amendments. It's, it's, the, it's the timing of it. I think normally at this meeting, and we do amend anything, but in the past, the town council uh, hearing and budget adoption has been earlier. Mm -hmm. So this was always the time that we made any amendments uh, to our, our budget, but I don't think we're prepared to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, right. I'd like to move that we table item 13D. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, Mm. Really not. <laughs> the letter is incorrect. G. 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 Excuse me. That's okay. Um, so let, let's go, let's go through and I mean we didn't adjust that at the beginning. So Jim has made a motion to table that item. Um, we may need to come back and and do some reconsideration or amendment. I Kevin, second. second. Comments or questions? I think we're all clear on why we need to table this. Mm -hmm. um, all those in favor? Seven zero. Um, 
and the last uh, is a consideration um, of a proposed Ful Fulbright uh, teacher exchange. And I was, I was very kind of excited about this. this. This is a very exciting opportunity for one of the staff members at the high school um, for a Fulbright teacher exchange program. Um, Jeff Shedd and um, um, the English department has been involved in, in reviewing applicants. And actually, I think the first one did not seem to work out. Uh, they, they're very pleased with the, the teacher who will be coming here. Um, and I think it's a great experience for Hannah Jones to be able to, her and her family, uh, go on an exchange with this, with this person uh, who will be coming here and occupying her home, I think. Okay. And we have, we have all of those details in front of us. Um, and what I need is a motion. Kevin. I move that we accept uh, the Fulbright teacher exchange involving Hannah Jones. Okay. And a second. Susan. Questions or comments? Kevin. Where, where exactly will Hannah be going? I, I didn't see the, uh, the paperwork on this. I, I, she goes she to this. She goes to Scotland. Scotland. To, to, okay. She goes to this. Um, I know I saw United Kingdom in there, but that's a little East bit East Ayrshire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Okay. Yeah. I, just curious. Um, and, it, it, and it is for a one-year exchange. Other questions or comments? Again, very excited about this kind of one stuff. One hand or I'll be visiting. <laughs> I think that uh, the board has been very supportive and enthusiastic of, of these kinds of initiatives. Um, it energizes our classrooms um, double. We get the energy of someone coming here who's very excited about being here. We get uh, Hannah an opportunity to go and energize another classroom and then to come back and, and uh, do it again with her new experience. So it's great. Um, did we vote? No. Um, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, we did add the contracts as uh, uh, an item here. And what we have are three contracts that I need um, a motion on each one separately. Um, Kevin, we'll start with the um, administrative support and ed tech ones. I, I move that we adopt the contract negotiated with the administrative support and ed tech one group. As presented to the board. As presented to the board. Um, uh, second, Susan, questions or comments about that particular contract? Always a pleasure to negotiate with the secretaries and the tech ones. Um, any other comments, questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. And the EdTech twos and threes, Kevin? I move that we adopt the negotiated contract with the EdTech twos and threes as presented to the board. Um, need a second on that, Jennifer? Questions or comments on that contract? They are equally delightful to deal with. <laughs> Another group of mentors. <laughs> um, okay. Other comments or questions? That's good. Um, all those in favor? 7-0. And I'll accept a motion um, from our outgoing uh, school board member, Jim Rowe, on the third contract for with administrators. I would move that we approve the uh, negotiated contract for our administrators for the coming school year. Is that 30 bucks a day? Yeah, 25. <laughs> negotiated with John. That's what John said. That's, at the high end. That's the high end, Tom. He seemed yeah. happy with it. And a second, Jennifer. Um, they were even more delightful. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hey, I was there. They were. <laughs> this could be how we all get ourselves in so much trouble <laughs> when it comes budget time, appearing that we have no restraint, um, though we all know that to not be true, that we have a tremendous amount of restraint. A lot of restraint. <laughs> Would anyone like to talk more about the level of restraint that we demonstrate? Um, step up. Other, other questions or comments? See, see, none. We're going out having fun, Jim. This huh? is. Um, all those in favor? Seven zero. 
And uh, before I entertain a motion to close this public meeting of the school board, I would like to review with you some uh, quickly some dates to remember. Um, and that is now on um, May 21st, which is next Tuesday, it's out of sequence with our regular workshop schedule. At the high school library, we do tentatively um, have as topics for a workshop uh, the superintendent's evaluation and also the school board evaluation. And uh, there might have been another topic there, but am I forgetting it? I guess we're all forgetting it if I'm forgetting it too. It's just kind of going through our to do list. Our to do Year list, and, right, and kind of getting ready for projects. next outstanding projects and all that kind of stuff. Um, um, it may uh, be uh, actually uh, uh, dedicated to more budget discussions if that becomes necessary. Uh, so that will be happening at the high school library, 7 p.m., May 21st. That's a Tuesday. Um, next Tuesday, as a matter of fact, the building committee meeting will happen on Thursday, May 30th at 7 p.m. in the Jordan Conference Room right here. Policy subcommittee, subcommittee meeting, as Jennifer said, uh, is the first Wednesday of the month, June 5th, noontime at the Jordan Conference Room. The finance subcommittee meeting on June 11th is at 6.30 in the conference room, which and that is preceding the regular school board meeting, the last for the academic year, um, and that will be 7.30 here in the chambers. I think I've covered all those. And uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to um, adjourn. I move that we stay a little while longer and uh, <laughs> fet Jim a bit. Um, is there a second to that motion? I didn't think so. OK. Um, the Celtics are playing. No. Just okay, just that's a just kidding. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. So moved by Kevin. Second. Second. And um, questions, comments, seeing none. All those in favor? Seven zero. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. <laughs>